This is the first in an installment of videos about the nitrogen gas laser, a simple gas laser that can be made entirely from scratch. Unlike other gas lasers, it can be built and operated without the need for mirrors or vacuum pumps. For some applications, the regulated flow of nitrogen through a needle valve is beneficial. In its simplest form, the laser can use a sheet of right on transparency separating a thin sheet of metal from a pair of aluminum saddle thresholds. The saddle thresholds are just aluminum rails with slightly raised edges. They are electrically connected by a string of resistors or an inductor, and one of the thresholds is electrically coupled to the opposing metal plate through a spark gap. Laser amplification occurs along the length of the narrow channel form between the two saddle thresholds. The saddle thresholds are slightly over an inch in active width. Divided into a pair of individual pieces about 9 inches in length, the resulting area provides sufficient capacitance for the laser to work. Although the laser will work with ambient air, nitrogen gas provides a huge boost in performance. Makeshift wooden slats provide clearance for a hose barb and cover through which nitrogen gas can be introduced to the electrode channel. A weight, such as a jar of coins or something reasonably heavy, secures the cover and presses the saddle thresholds flat and securely against the right own transparency dielectric surface. Some nitrogen lasers use partially evacuated tubes and others work at atmospheric pressure. The most common and possibly popular nitrogen laser among amateur builders is the TEA or Transverse Electrode at Atmospheric Pressure Nitrogen Laser. The TEA nitrogen laser uses a high voltage DC power supply to charge an extremely thin insulator called a dielectric through metal films that have been placed on opposing sides. One side of the dielectric has a single metal film and the opposing side has two separate metal films separated by a narrow channel. The channel is electrically connected by an inductor or resistor. The borders of the metal films forming the sides of the channel support rounded metal profiles that serve as electrodes. One of the two films is connected to the opposing plate through a spark gap. At less than atmospheric pressure, nitrogen laser pulses last longer and larger capacitors can be constructed and used. Inductance can be higher and electrode surface quality is not as critical. Laser beam quality is higher and its width can be much greater than that of a TEA laser for a given voltage. Notice that the electrode channel is now occupied by a laser tube instead of an open channel. The laser tube is generally a rectangular shaped box with windows through which the output beam escapes. Although super radiant like its TEA cousin, the TERP TERP or transverse electrode at reduced pressure nitrogen laser can contain an optional external mirror to boost and concentrate its output in a single direction. And finally, for both TEA and TERP lasers, the laser and spark gap can be swapped, forming what is known as a charge transfer circuit. Placing inductance or resistance across the laser then becomes optional, only becoming necessary at excessive voltages to prevent sparks from bypassing the spark gap. Four characteristics make the nitrogen laser an ideal type to build high gain, low energy, peak power, and wavelength. The gain is so high that the laser doesn't require optical feedback. This means no mirrors to align. A low energy input brings the laser within reach of anyone capable of building the simplest of homemade capacitors. It also means the laser device can be powered with very little current supply, such as electrostatic machines. The high peak power and wavelength of the laser beam enables the small amount of energy to do relatively impressive things, like pump laser dies. As many of you can recall, the speed of light is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. According to John Singer, a TEA nitrogen laser pulse is around 800 picoseconds long. This means light travels approximately one quarter of a meter or nine and a half inches during this time. The lower laser level of nitrogen also has a longer life than its upper laser level, which means nitrogen gas absorbs its laser radiation once the lower laser level becomes populated. For these reasons, it's of little use to build a TEA nitrogen laser with an active length greater than 9.5 inches long. A small TEA nitrogen laser with capacitors totaling 3 nanofarads, charged to 10 kilovolts, will only produce a laser pulse of 150 microjoules, assuming a typical nitrogen laser efficiency of one-tenth of one percent. This is identical to the kinetic energy of a paperclip being dropped from a height of just over one inch or three centimeters. Given an 800 picosecond laser pulse, however, this energy will result in around 187,000 watts of peak power. 
This combination of energy and peak power is more than enough to pump dyes or cause instant and permanent eye damage.